today I want to talk to you about open my eyes I can't see open my eyes I can't see it I hear that yep 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 <laughs> because of our salvation our eyes are open to the truth but we can't see because of fear and greed fear because we don't want to be cast out of this world ridiculed and talked about are you with me greed because we want what we want and so we believe whatever we need to believe in to get what we want I'll, I'll try to explain some of that today Christians are tripping it's our fault that the world is so messed up because we don't judge like we used to you know you'll begin to judge a situation that's straight out wrong and somebody will tell you don't judge me but the Bible said that I've called you to judge know ye not that ye shall judge angels can you not judge these small matters don't you know the church is important in John 9 2 says these words one day Jesus and his disciples was walking by and they seen a blind man begging and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind Jesus said nobody sinned this man is his so that all might see the power of God then Jesus made some mud with his saliva and dirt and anointed this man's eyes and commanded him to go wash out your eyes in the pool of Siloam. And the man returned no longer blind. So there was a bunch of people that said that, that isn't this that blind fellow that used to be asking for money? And others said, no, no, that's not him. He just looked like him. And so they asked him, are you the blind man? He said, I'm the one, I'm, I'm him. What happened? Well, this man, Jesus, he, he put mud in my eye and told me to go wash it out. And then I could see. And he said, where is he? And they said, I don't know where he is. See, by the time I got back, he was gone. So they brought him to the Pharisees. And the 14 said, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened that man's eyes. On the Sabbath day, how dare you? 15 said, then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes and I washed them and then I could see. 16 said, therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. I don't believe they could see. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division. Just like today, there is a division between Christians and other Christians. And even a division between Christian leaders and other Christian leaders unable to see like these people. See, I remember when sin was sin. I remember when wrong was wrong. You didn't need nothing else. Even in the natural world, they know the difference between right and wrong. It's wrong. Whatever was wrong before, it's still wrong. Whatever was right, it's still right. We no longer believe the word of God like we did when we first received salvation. We search the scriptures for truth, and that is a good thing, but we fail to realize that truth is already in you. It's the Holy Ghost. But many of us are influenced by this world. 
trying to play it safe. Like the blind man, uh, uh, parents, his parents. And if we go down to 919, the blind man's parents, they called on. In 19, it said, and they asked them, saying, is this your son who ye say was born blind? How then can he see now? His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But, and, and you know, the thing is that they didn't even praise the Lord. <laughs> My boy was blind and now he can see. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Father. Because instead of begging for money, now he can go to work and support the family. But they were so afraid. But by what means he now sees, we know not. Or who has opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. Now, 22, it says, these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. They weren't afraid that the Jew of the, the Jew itself, they were afraid what the Jews could do. What these people could do. They were afraid because it said, therefore, said his parents, he is of age, ask him. But before that, it said the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out the synagogue, put out the church. Today, people don't mind being put out the church. Put me out. Because I can worship God anywhere. But they knew that the place to worship God was in the synagogue. The worst thing that can ever happen to you is be put out. Oh, my God, I'm not homophobic. I'm not afraid of homosexuality. Why should I be afraid? But many people out there are afraid of what they can do. Afraid you're going to lose your job if you say something. Afraid they're going to talk about you if you say something. Put you on the defense if you say something. Don't you dare something. Don't you say nothing. Say nothing. There was a parade. There was a pastor out there with his collar all on. And all he was doing was going by while they were going by. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. They tackled that boy. Jumped on him. Because it was offensive. He was arrested. Inciting riot. I just said God loves you. Well, you shouldn't have said it to them because you know they don't want to hear nothing about God loving them because they know deep in their heart they remember wrong. They remember. They don't want to hear it. But there are many Christians who are now falling into this this sin and, and other sins like that. And so it says here that uh, just like the reaction of the Pharisees, so many of our eyes are open, but we can't see. And remember, they're open because of our salvation, because the truth is in us. But somehow we can't see. The proof is standing right in front of these, these Sadducees and Pharisees. The truth is standing right in front of you, the blind man. Just like the truth is standing right inside of us, and we know this. But we refuse to be led by that truth, which is the Holy Ghost. The proof is standing right there. The blind man is, is, uh, that was blind by birth can now see, but they initially refuse to believe that God has done this miracle. There are none so blind as those that refuse to see. Eyes are open, but they can't see. So they say, obviously, this man, uh, Jesus, is not from God because he he won't he doesn't even uh, 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 do what is legal and not do anything on the Sabbath day. Obviously, he's not of God. So I say just because at times we are asked people. Different questions in the Bible. 
And just because we can't find those answers right away doesn't mean the person's right. There, there's a question out there that some people say, uh, uh, did, did Jesus, where in the New Testament did Jesus address homosexuality? And because many Christians don't have an answer, doesn't mean they're right. You know the truth because the truth is in you. Amen. Jesus didn't uh, address smoking cigarettes. I don't know why. Maybe because they wasn't smoking at that time. Amen. He did address drinking too much. Uh, But just because you can't find Jesus addressing something doesn't mean it's not right. Or wrong. Any of those things. But let me give you an answer to that. In uh, Matthew 19, 4 to 6, Jesus did address it, just not like they thought. For it said, and he answered and said unto them, have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them what? Male and female. He just addressed it. Made them male and female and said, for this cause, there's a reason why, amen, he made male and female. There's a reason, amen. I thank God for the reason. I love and truly thank God for the reason, amen. There's a reason he made them male and female. And he said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they will become twined in one flesh. Six, he said, wherefore they are no more twined, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder for this cause. So he did address it. But just because we can't find it don't mean we don't know. Don't fool yourself. There are some people who don't understand, don't know why uh, we have to go to church. But deep down inside of them, they know why. Because the Holy Spirit is there trying to lead. In John 9, 39 and 41, amen, says these words. 39, it says, and Jesus said, for judgment, I am come into this world that they which see not might see and they which see might be blind. Some of the Pharisees who were around him while he was speaking, they asked him, are we blind too? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see Your guilt remains to explain it. I I wrote this: We were blind, but now we see because we believe in Jesus Christ as the son of God, the redeemer of our salvation. Those who claim to see do not believe in Christ and therefore their sin remains. They will be judged. Can the blind lead the blind? Can those who run away lead you to battle? Can those who leave their posts by leaving the church, they were called to give you counsel on how to stand your ground and don't leave your post and fight until you die? Father, open our eyes. Open our eyes. Open our eyes. All right, all right, all right. I get so tired of going on YouTube and finding well-known pastors. Can't even answer a straight question. 
They say, Pastor, we just want to know it's Jesus the only way. And they'll say, well, you know, I can't judge. I mean, well, I don't, I'm just called. I say, well, you know, it's just a great question. Did it not say that he is the only way? And if anybody try to come in on another way, that they like a thief. And you know what happens to thief that try to get into your home? If you there, somebody going down. I don't care what they say. Uh, I was just trying to see if you home where the front door is in the front. <laughs> Not the back window. I remember. I remember when Sunday, every Sunday, everybody was at church. I remember that. I remember uh, riding my bike to the gas station after church and it was closed on Sunday morning. I remember every store was closed on Sunday because the owner and the manager was in church. They may not have been serving God, but they knew where they supposed to be on Sunday morning. Amen. But now our eyes are closed. And we're trying to watch the service. We're trying to watch the service on YouTube, Facebook. Tell me where God, where Jesus addressed Facebook as being a sin. Tell me where Jesus addressed. Well, I'm telling you, God said, Jesus said, that it's important that we gather, that we might exalt his name. Together. I can't do it with you if you're at home. Can't do it with you. Now, there's some of us that we got to do what we got to do. I mean, I'm sick, so all I could do is watch it on TV until I get well. But I can't wait till they, till they tell me, come on in. I can't wait. Because my eyes has been opened. I remember... When you could just answer a question straight on. I'm saved, born again, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost to do the work of the ministry. And it's going to take a sacrifice. I'm going to get hated by some. Some I will give all I can give and they will still walk out on me because somebody else hurt them. Or something that I might have said. I remember when people would just listen to the pastor. And if they got hurt, they got hurt. Some people get their heart pricked. And then they repent. Others get cut and they run out. But then they come back again. Say, Pastor, can you pray for me? Because the doctor said I only got two weeks. And what does the pastor do? Pray for him. Pray for him. But I'm going to tell you, I don't pray as hard for them as I pray for you who are here. I'm telling you, y'all, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I got too many other souls to take care of. God has given me a sheep to take care of, not to feed sheep and other pastors. Amen. But I will pray for your brother if you say, Pastor, pray for my brother, pray for my mother. And they don't attend the church. I will still pray for them for your sake. Because of you, because I don't want you worrying I don't want you going through. I don't want you hurting. I don't keep want to keep seeing you crying. So I pray for them for you. I remember when sin. I mean, I can name some pastors that just blew my mind. I love to hear them preach. But don't let them sit in front of Oprah. Because she's going to ask them the straight out question. 
Is Jesus Lord? Well, well, you know, well, you know, uh, uh, mm, uh, well, and then people call in and say, oh, come on, pastor. You know, Jesus is the way. Well, yeah, Jesus is the way, you know, but uh, uh, because I might lose money. Jesus can't be always the way. Because I need my money. I thank God to give me a small church. He's kept me and he's merciful because he didn't want me to get out there and have to try to defend. I mean, I've been to meetings where pastors have, have, have what are you doing to get your people back? I told them, I'm just preaching. They either come back or they don't. That's all I do. My people, when they were strong and strong and strong, they paid the church off. Thank the Lord. See, God is good. God knew what was coming up. And he knew that there were going to be many who were going to walk out, get excited for the corona like they were skipping school or something. They're like, oh, we don't have to go to church. I thank God for the corona. Oh, Lord. Some of them will tell you, they say, oh, you know, my church is cold. I have coffee and I have donuts and bagels all sitting there ready for the church to come on. All excited. God knew it. And he said, son, I'm going to have you pay off your church so you don't have to be worrying about those kind of bills. Amen. So I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So I didn't have to fight for the money. And even now, I don't fight for the money. It goes around one time, you either give it or you miss it. You give it or you miss it. And if you miss it, too bad on you. But yet we, we know that there's some who miss, so we put a little box in the back that says, offerings. <laughs> it don't even have ties on it, because you got to be here, pay your tithes. Offerings. I remember when wrong was wrong. I remember when we all fell short and got back up much quicker than before. Y'all remember that? I remember when my left was left. I remember when I had respect. You remember Christians used to have respect. Christians used to have respect. You used to could play your Christian card and get stuff. You know? You could go to a, a place and you don't have good credit. You ain't got a three times the amount of the rent, but you play that Christian card. Well, you know, I'm saying. And I really love the Lord. And I go to church every Sunday and I give God praise for his goodness and for his mercy. For they follow me. Do you see them? They'll back me up and make sure that I pay you. And people used to accept your Christian card and let you slide. I remember when we had respect. I remember. But now they will tell you, I'm sorry. But most of y'all Christians, y'all be the last to pay. We did that. We did that. You know, you have to learn. To be a man or a woman of your word. God is a God of his word. And he will keep his word. You got to learn how to keep your word. Don't give your word if you ain't going to keep it. If you ain't going to pay that, that, that loan back, then sign your name all squiggly wiggly all kinds of ways. Because it's not your word. You're going to pay it back, put your name right. I'm going to pay this back because that's your word. 
I only say that because it's, it's the way it's going. I remember when we kept our word. When you said, I'm coming over between one and two. I expect you between one and two. When you come at three, I'm gone. I left. You were there between one and two. I remember we all were on time. The church. You remember that? I remember when we all came to Bible study. Didn't matter how hard we worked. I remember. I remember when we praised till we fell down. I remember if somebody didn't get blessed in our family, we would go back up again. Pastor, before you leave, before you leave, you got to pray for this person. I remember. Oh, you know, I end a long time ago. But I just keep remembering. I remember all of you guys. I remember your commitment. I remember your loyalty. To the ministry, to the church, which is God's house. So don't think that uh, to be loyal to God's house is not being loyal to God. Because you are loyal to God because everything that belongs to God is God's. And therefore he looks for your commitment to it. He gave you children. He expects you to be committed to them. Because God gave it. Every good thing comes from above. That's what they tell me. Amen. He gave you a good man. Expects you to be loyal. Gave you a good woman. Expects you to take care of them. God is good. And he only gives good things. To us. Amen. If you ain't got one. Better ask God for it. I want a good one because I'm going to be good. How many people in here got goodness this, this time? The fruit goodness. Goodness. Better be good. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. Thank you for listening to this short excerpt. If you would like to view the full service, please go to our YouTube channel, Grace Cove One, find the full list of videos, and search for the video titled Full Service and Sermon. We also welcome you to join us at Grace Covenant at 285 Clay Avenue. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, God is over all.